With the hood and upper part inside lies a submarine, a strange craft which has just made its first appearance in these parts. People come to see watch the departure of the craft. Sailors in arms march around and are inspected by an officer. The simple fisherman, Eve, is conducted by a nymph to this port unknown to him. A cabin boy brings the uniform of a commanding officer and presents it to the bewildered fisherman. officer announces to him his rank and responsibility in charge of the boat. Convinced at least that all which is taking place is reality, Eve determines to assume responsibilities. As soon as he has received the necessary explanations from the officer, the crowd wishes Eve bon voyage and he goes on board. stand aside and the submarine submerges in the waves. The curious crowd tries to follow its evolutions in the transparent water. submarine plunges into the abysses of the ocean. Wonderful algae appear and so dense are the enormous fronds that the boat makes progress with difficulty. Finally, it disappears altogether in the strange vegetation of the ocean bottom. We shall re-encounter the submarine later. A starfish has changed into a huge ornamental star surrounded by gracefully posed creatures. A grand ballet is danced by the corps de ballet of the Châtelet under the direction of Madame Stichel.
but a violent agitation of the water above their heads takes place. The dancers are terrified and flee. The eddying was produced by the submarine in which we left Eve, the fisherman. The inexperienced officer has run into a rock and his wrecked boat settles down lamentably. A large hole in the hull sends forth huge air bubbles which ascend to the surface while living fish swim away in every direction. Eve, astonished at the sudden stop of the boat, appears at a manhole. Before his dazzled eyes pass by fishes and strangely fantastical living things. He perceives some belated mermaids running away from the sight of the submarine. He leaves the boat from the breach in her side and soon engages in a struggle with monstrous fish and mighty crabs. He flees away, thinking that this dream of his is all in reality. The fisherman traverses vast caverns. He is surprised at the unusual sights and his natural curiosity forces him to examine at close range the objects which surround him. like to examine some clumps of coral, but as he strands near, the branches surround his head and imprison him. He observes some strange sea flowers and strives to smell them, but the flowers lengthen out immeasurably. Suddenly, he glances at a number of seahorses that are swimming up to the surface. He thinks if he can only grab hold of one and mount it, he may be able to reach the shore again. Just at this moment, some large fish, enraged at finding an intruder in the midst, swim up to him and try to devour him. An enormous octopus now enters upon the scene and seizes him with its tentacles. In retaliation for all the fish he has drawn from the sea in his net, some marine divinities, in their turn, succeed in imprisoning him in the meshes of a net which they bring. The nightmare draws to an end. Suffocated, he awakes, struggling. Eve has slimply fallen from his bed, head first, into a tub. It is only in his own nets and lines that he is struggling for freedom. The fishermen friends call in the people of the village and in the midst of general hilarity, they extricate him from his ludicrous predicament. When all is explained and understood, Eve confesses that the drinks will be on him. <laughs>